there, it's Tank Girl, and this here is the Yola phone, or Jola phone, depending who you talk to. Uh, I like to say Yola, and I've had it for about a month to review, and I wanted to uh, share my thoughts about the hardware and the software. Um, so before we start, a little bit of history. You might not be familiar with Yola, and um, this phone that I'm bringing up here is the Nokia N9, and it came out in 2011. It was the first and last phone, really, um, to run an OS called Migo, which was a Linux-based OS that Nokia had been working on for a while um, to kind of replace Symbian. Um, but then they decided to go with Windows Phone. And in fact, the first Lumia, the 800, looks almost identical in shape and design to this phone, but runs Windows Phone. And this runs Migo. So, basically, Nokia threw all this stuff away. A group of people that worked at Nokia decided to you know, take the best things of this and iterate and evolve it into something new, which they call uh, Sailfish, which is made, did into this phone, made by Yola. So the company Yola made this OS based on Migo called Sailfish. Now, I'm oversimplifying. There's way more to the story, but I just wanted to give you some context. And what's cool about Sailfish is that it retains a lot of the cool things about Migo, um, the core of it anyway, and puts a new UI that's very gesture-based on top of it. And in a modern, uh, much more updated um, case with the modern specs and hardware. The N9 was a single core um, device, for example. It's, it's getting pretty long in the tooth in terms of hardware. Now, the other interesting thing about Sailfish is that it can run Android apps. It has the ability to run Dalvik apps so it can it can it can do that which is really cool so it's a bit of a hybrid you get a bit of an android experience but as well you get a very much a native experience with these gestures and stuff so before we get into the us more i wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, the hardware so this is the phone um it's very rectangular but quite beautiful um, as you can see, it has a bit of that Oreo thing going with two halves, one black, one white. And I'll get to the explanation as to why that matters in a second. But to walk you through it really quickly, the top here, as you can see, is a front-facing camera, a speaker uh, earpiece, and then a bunch of sensors there. And then at the bottom, you don't see anything, no buttons, nothing. There's actually a little LED here for notification at the bottom. Uh, very useful for like charging and other things. In the back, you have an 8 megapixel autofocus camera, LED flash. I don't know if you can see this very well um, on video, but there's actually um, a, a Yola logo here. There it is. Um, kind of like imprinted in the, uh, in the plastic shell. Same here at the top, you'll see that uh, there's, there's a Yola logo right there, which is really kind of cool. And then, of course, walking around, get a uh, secondary microphone, micro USB charge and data connection, uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, standard fare, and then you have on the side here you have the uh, power lock key and the volume rocker. And then at the bottom you really have nothing. You can see some holes here, uh, some grills uh, for speaker and microphone. I don't think it's stereo, it's just mono. And that's pretty much it for the left hand side. There's really nothing there. So that's the tour of the phone quickly in terms of uh, features and design. Now, this um, black rim almost all the way along the edge here, except for the bottom part, is aluminum, which is really nice and premium. It turns into plastic down here. You can see the difference, probably for the antennas or whatever. But here's what's really interesting. This phone, the battery cover is this whole white uh, piece, and I'm gonna like take it off so you can see what I'm talking about. So here it is, right? And what's interesting about this design is that you they call this the other half. So this could actually accommodate different thicknesses and include hardware that interfaces with the phone via all these different uh, contacts you see here. So of course there's the SIM slot, um, it's a micro SIM, you got a micro SD expansion here in the camera and stuff, but as you can see there's a bunch of extra connectors that could mate with a case. There's also NFC on this device and 
as you can see there's uh, something here in, uh, in this cover that actually tells the phone uh, what color cover you have on so that it can coordinate the UI to match. So that's something Nokia did but with pins on, I believe it was the S N79, a Symbian phone back in the day. So it's kind of interesting to see what they've done there. Notice also, removable battery, I'm not going to pull it out because it's going to shut down the phone and I want to show you some stuff. But this is a small battery, it's like 2100, 2200 milliamp hour range. Um, again, you could theoretically have a thicker battery that goes in here with a thicker other half that maybe contains some additional hardware like some sensors or whatever. Um, so it's kind of an interesting idea, this concept of the other half and the matching pins and contacts to go with it. So I'll put it back together here real quick. Uh, probably easiest for me to do this by pressing down on the table here. And so this other half concept is pretty cool. You can diff get different colors, bigger batteries, maybe a better camera, other things that can be uh, put on the phone, which is really cool. So let's talk about the specs. This is very similar to an Android device, really. There is no magic here in that sense. Uh, very mid-range. Uh, it's a 4.5-inch display. It's unfortunately, I say unfortunately because I think even affordable phones now have better resolutions. It's a QHD display. So it's, uh, you know, not quite as high res as I'd like uh, for that size uh, today, anyway. Um, then um, the other thing is the processor. It's a Qualcomm Snapdragon 400 dual core with uh, one gig of RAM. It does have LTE, but unfortunately, and I don't understand why, um, well, the bands are not compatible with the US, but what's even weirder is that, as you know, Qualcomm chips generally support all kinds of plethoras of uh, 3G and 2G, but this is quad band uh, edge, so 2G works, but it only has dual band 3G HSPA Plus for Europe and Asia, so 2100, 900, which means if you look at the phone status screen right here, it says 2G, right below my finger here. So we're on edge here in the US, and I've tried different SIMs, tried T-Mobile even, uh, no, no go on 3G um, for the US. And this is a little disappointing considering there's a Qualcomm chip in here. It should be able to do um, other bands without uh, you know, even thinking about it. So that's, you know, that's a bit odd. Um, so if you're in the U.S., this is going to be a problem. Uh, of course, Yola is not selling specifically with the U.S. market in mind, but nonetheless, if you are a, uh, a U.S. user, you'd probably be better served with a different hardware because you can only get 2G on this. Uh, right now, I'm connected over Wi-Fi. You can also see this right now really quickly on the status screen uh, right here. That little icon there is Wi-Fi and of course 2G, my battery status. So actually let's go over some of the software functionality because it is very unique, uh, very gesture based. So the phone is off, double tap on it to turn it on. You can also um, you can also like tap the power lock key. Uh, notice what I did, this gesture from the top turns it off. Um, also you can just tap the uh, power lock key for turning it off. So you have the ability to wake up and put this phone to sleep without touching the power lock key. Double tap and slide down. Um, now you're presented with this lock screen and you'd have notifications displayed. You can tell what carrier you're on. I don't know if you can see it says AT&T up here. Um, this design can be changed obviously to be a little more readable. If you pull down you start seeing the battery life, Wi-Fi connectivity and the fact that you're using a 2G network and then you get brought to this area which is wh what active apps are running would be shown here and I'll show you this in a second for example if I start the web browser as you can see the web browser started but it's now sitting as a running app in this in this running app tray and then there is a and you can see it's a live window it actually updated the Yola website in the background um, now if you keep scrolling you get you know, an app grade, like more like the, the launcher. So this shows all your apps. And as you can see, starting about this row here with Nova Launcher, we've got Android. We've got an entire Android universe here of Android apps. So you can install Android apps, which is kind of interesting. Um, I'll get back to that in a second. And if you keep going, you know, that's pretty much where it maxes out. So again, you know, 
you get the, the, the whole experience. So if I um, keep going down here, get the tasks that are running and the apps. Now you notice that when I pulled up, I got some menus. And this is how you get the menus. And you can't feel this right now, but every time I tap, I change from one menu item to the other, I get a little haptic feedback. So I, it feels like it's clicking into place and it's very intuitive. So, you know, from basically the lock screen, I can go to silence, sounds, um, which I want to do, by the way, so I'm just going to do it. There you go. Um, I can go to the phone dialer, I can go to the camera, I can go to the setting screen. And here's the setting screen, it's going to start running. So, notice that if I'm in an app, I can quit that app by sliding down and killing it. Or, if I'm in an app, let's run the dialer. I can uh, slide sideways and that brings me to this task screen. So again, I'm in the web browser, slide sideways, I'm back into the screen. And then the dialer, sideways, you can do it the other way too, which is cool. So from the other side. And you can also do it from the top. Um, if you peek like that, you can peek. You can also peek from the side. It's a transparency going on here. It's really kind of cool. Like that. And, okay. So, um, how do you kill an app again? From the top. And it kills it. And from the top. Now I'm going to run a few apps again so we can you can see multitasking. Um, so there's a web browser. Back to the main screen. Uh, let's start the messaging app. And so here we go. So I go back like this. Now what I can do is if I tap and hold, I can delete these and kill them. So that's task manager, basically. Again, the app tray here. Now there's another gesture. There's another thing you should. So remember when I'm in this, I can pull down to get menus, right? Um, and this is actually something that happens in every app. I'll show you in a second. So let's go back to, sorry. Let's go back to the law, to the dialer here. If I pull, I get choices, right? So I can call a contact, enter a phone number. Enter a phone number gives me a dialer, right? So, now you understand how this works. Alright, so what's also important to know is if you swipe from the bezel on the bottom up, you get the notification screen. So if I get a text message or something, or any notification, even the Android notifications for the Android apps, they will end up appearing in here, which is really kinda cool. Uh, as you can see, you can update the notifications, so it, it uh, you know, it'll go and find new ones, and then uh, you know you can adjust your presence. This is kind of cool because it has built-in IM clients, which lets you tell, set your presence in here. And so if you slide sideways, you're back to the screen. So that's kind of like the gist of how this works in terms of the user the user interactions. Another thing to quickly show you, and this would be best shown in the settings menu. Um, if I go into settings. Um, if I drill down into uh, an, an area, I can tap this top screen to get back. So if I drill down into system settings, wireless LAN, I can go back. Or mobile networks, I can go back. And you can also go back by, by swiping sideways on any non-UI element. So, so if I go in here, I swipe back. That's how it works. Um, so on an app that doesn't have a, this little back stack, you can actually, you know, swipe back by going, you know, twice, twice in this direction once and twice and you're back. So very gesture based. Uh, it, it seems odd right now in video to show you, but it's actually really quite intuitive once you start using it. Now, do you want to use this over Android or another OS? I'm not sure. Um, I mean, obviously this phone is going to be a, a hassle to use in the US because it doesn't have 3G or LT, but in other markets, it might be a worthwhile case. Now, keep in mind, another thing is important is that this is a 400 euro phone. 400 euro can buy you this, right? Nexus 5. Uh, you can buy this for $350. This is a 32 gig version. Uh, but, you know, that's a lot of money, 400 euros versus $350 to spend uh, on a phone. Spec-wise, doesn't even come close, right? So, of course, you're going to say, but you're not running Sailfish, you're running Android. Fair enough. But here's the thing. Um, in terms of software, I really like this gesture-based UI, and I really like the fact that this is based on Mego or 
and it's been evolved that Sailfish is really trying to differentiate itself that has a whole bunch of native apps including a native app store here and a run for you guys so yeah I do care this matters this is cool but ultimately I found that for my needs for what I do every day for the apps I need I ended up installing a whole bunch of Android apps now by default it comes with the um, Yandex App Store for Android which is right here it doesn't come with Google Play Store there is a hack that you can enable that quickly lets you uh, install the Play Store and as you can see I have the full Play Store here and it works it works great um, there you have it I'm on <laughs> basically I can install Android apps from here um, and you notice that it now gives me Android buttons I have a back button and I have a mini a task button um, now this is I believe Android 4 point something uh, equivalents and so if I swipe from the side again this becomes a task right we're back to the standard UI now what's interesting is if I start running an app like say Google Play Music now if I tap on here I can see the other Google, the other Android app so it looks like Android apps are lumped together onto, under one task so to make my life easier what I actually did was um, I installed Nova Launcher and now I can just launch Nova Launcher and I basically have an Android phone right here are my apps right my widgets um, basically I'm in an Android phone at this point the only thing I can change in here are settings and things that are system related so this is kind of where it's really interesting is that it's kind of got this split personality and here are all my Android apps as you can see all of these work just fine there's a few that don't work I can't really get the the calendar app from Google to work properly for whatever reason uh, Pebble uh, doesn't work because the Bluetooth uh, the uh, Android apps can't see Bluetooth for some reason but you know the camera stuff works for example Instagram works uh, if I put my uh, if I run Instagram right here and I put my uh, Nexus as you can see uh, Instagram camera support is working just fine so um, notice you know the icon minimized and in the system so that's that's kind of my takeaway here is I love the hardware it's beautiful it's a little too expensive for what it is considering what you can buy spec wise like a Nexus 5 but it's gorgeously made I really love the concept of the other half um, the OS is really interesting the gesture based stuff seems odd but you get used to it really quickly and it's very intuitive but the scarcity of um, you know of built-in apps right now makes this really hard to use as a daily driver there is social media integration there's some some interesting stuff out of the box but really not enough if you're used to an iOS or Android phone and so you end up installing these Android apps or finding a way to hack Android onto the phone uh, and notice also another thing Chrome doesn't seem to work for whatever reason there's a pretty decent WebKit browser world built in of course and a bunch of other apps I showed you the store earlier so an RSS feed reader calculator your contacts uh, picture gallery settings of course you can access directly from here uh, documents at all office suite uh, media playback for music um, and video uh, notice there's a terminal which is really cool um, actually gives you access to command line if you put your phone in developer mode which you need to do if you want to install the Play Store one of the cool things that the, the actual developer mode lets you do is SSH into the phone and uh, use uh, SFTP to copy files back and forth so um, if you're just an end user and you plug the phone in to maybe transfer some content it actually doesn't do anything it appears as uh, it doesn't work so once you once you unlock that it's really kind of cool to have the option to SSH and uh, uh, SFTP into your device but it's very nerdy you know it's the same as the hack to install the App Store uh, by default it uses the Index Store so again you know some native apps I uh, end up using mostly Android apps and since they don't all work 100% it's not the best experience so I'm really hoping that uh, Yola can incite more developers to write native apps for Sailfish so that we can have an ecosystem like we did have in uh, the Migo days and then um, I want them to enable at least 3G for the US because 
Um, you know, if you're going to spend 400 euros on this phone, it'd be nice to be able to use it on 3G in the US. And I'm really curious to see what's going to happen with the uh, other half ecosystem. Uh, one last thing I want to quickly mention is the camera is an 8 megapixel autofocus camera with LED flash and it works pretty well. Uh, let's bring back the uh, um, the N9 here and as you can see the interface is nice and clean, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you know it's nothing outstanding or crazy, it does the job. I've taken some pretty decent pictures with it but I'm not like completely madly in love with the camera either. So. You know, again, um, I really applaud what Yola's doing. Um, you know, A for effort, keep it up. Um, I just wish this had 3G for the US and more native apps. And if you're going to give us Google integration, make it make it more seamless and easier to set up. Um, and then um, the price is is a big question. I mean, the, the the hardware is gorgeous, and the concept of the other half is certainly cool. So, speaking of hardware, let's just quickly do comparisons with uh, for size and stuff. So, again, here's the Nexus Five, so you can see what they look like side by side. Not much uh, smaller than the Nexus Five, yet the screen is much lower res and much smaller, 4.5 versus 5 inch QHD versus full HD. And then uh, the back looks like this. So both of these are 8 megapixel cameras, but the one on the Nexus 5 has optical image stabilization, of course. And then uh, thickness wise, they, they kind of, well, you know, it's not that thick. The Nexus 5 is a little thinner, but you know, we're splitting hairs here, really. Uh, then of course, compared to the good old N N9, um, much bigger phone, but you know, the N9 to today's standard is a pretty small phone. So what they look like from the back, again, um, 8 megapixels, and then the uh, thickness comparison, the inevitable thickness comparison, here you go. And it's interesting to see again the similarities in color scheme and layout here. Anyway, so this is my review of the Yola phone and Sailfish OS. So I hope you subscribe to my channel and uh, check out my blog, tankgirl.com. And um, that's a wrap. Cheers.